Okay, so uh, thanks uh, very much. My name is Jerry Gormley from Belfast and uh, delighted to present to you a piece of work uh, with my colleagues uh, Carl Bennon and Martin uh, Dempster. So the topic is you're going to be a doctor and you can't tell right from left. When I often mention this topic to individuals uh, that some uh, people have difficulty telling right from left, I get one of two responses. What do you mean? Or, oh, I know uh, what you mean. So really exploring about uh, laterality and particularly about human factors uh, and laterality uh, decisions. So um, it's one of those basic tasks we do every day, but in effect, we actually uh, draw upon several higher functions in discriminating uh, right from left. We find it easy to tell from above and below, but laterality uh, draws in many higher functions. But one critical one uh, is mental rotation. So for example, in the typical clinical, clinical presentation where I'm facing a patient, my left is opposite their right, so I have to mentally rotate uh, sides. We know that some individuals are challenged by this. The science really hasn't got there to why this happens. We think uh, around symmetry of the brain, so apparently the more uh, symmetrical your hemi, uh, cerebral hemispheres are, uh, the more difficulty you have in telling right from left, and obviously that probably will be a, a genetic uh, preponderance. Um, so, telling right from left, getting it wrong, what does it mean? Not a big issue. Uh, if you were traveling from one side, obviously this person had one job and did it wrong. Uh, turn left, that's not left. Um, so if you got in the wrong direction and travel, yeah, that's not going to be a big deal. Uh, but of course, uh, in our industry, in healthcare, uh, it's a major issue. We've all heard about never uh, events, and unfortunately never events continue to occur, uh, and also wrong-sided surgery is actually increasing. And of course, a wrong-sided surgery is actually the, uh, the tip of the iceberg in terms of laterality uh, errors. So back in 2008, we uh, investigated uh, students' uh, measured uh, ability to tell right from left, and this was using a psychometric test called the Bergen Right Left Discrimination Test. And you'll see here that there is a skew that many people can tell right from left, uh, but towards uh, this side of the screen, you'll see that many individuals actually have a, a lower score and are more challenged in, in making laterality uh, decisions. So. We, we published a few articles in that, in the press, did a few pieces in that. And then this was the inspiration for my research. I got a, pa a, a patient, and a member of the public wrote a letter to me and saying, look, thank you. Uh, I have been ashamed that I can't tell right from left. Uh, and now that I realize that it, it, it's something that might be not just me, it's actually something uh, that many people uh, have issues with. I, I'm really delighted to know to, I'm not on my own. And that was a real starting point about individuality. Of course, error and wrong-sided error, uh, uh, wrong-sided surgery, uh, and many other procedures, it's multifactorial. But one key area is about the individual factors. Uh, and that really got me thinking, you know, about individuals, how do we tell from right from left uh, uh, in, in healthcare? So uh, our research was to really get a nuanced insight to how students, medical students in this case, tell right from left uh, in, in their training. Um, so the way that we approach this is that we wanted to get their experience. And there are many ways of getting that in research, narrative research, um, autoethnography, but one that we use is hermetic, uh, hermeneutic uh, phenomenology, that real sort of lived experience, trying to be in the shoes of those individuals and get their experiences. So our methodology and methods that we approached, uh, we recruited um, uh, fourth year medical students um, in a purposeful sampling, so make sure we got a distribution between uh, gender and their perceived ability, because we know that if you think you're good at telling right from left, you actually are better objectively. Uh, after um, inviting and uh, in, uh, our students, we uh, um, we interviewed them, um, uh, uh, and uh, then uh, we performed an analysis we're using a template analysis approach, uh, which really gave us an insight within and across cases uh, to generate uh, our themes. So I'd like to share those uh, with you. Uh, we've got a number of uh, main themes, and I'd like to take you one uh, at a time. And the first theme is about discriminating right from left, an unconscious task. So for some individuals, they just know it. They can do it. This is my right, this is my left. However, for another, uh, for many individuals, they go through a process. The first thing is that the thought lands with them, and then they have to discriminate right and left themselves. And they often use triggers. You know about this sort of little thing that this is my left and this is my right. But there's a whole array of triggers, you know, wedding band, wristwatch, um, and then they have to project that onto the patient in front of them. And sometimes they even use body maneuvers to, to do that, to determine right from left in another person. Um, I'll just give you some examples of uh, those quotes. 
uh, is that whenever you're placing the pads on the defibrillator of a chest, I really have to think to myself, you know, which is the left side to put that paddle on. Um, I do have to think and make a conscious decision, decide whether it's right or left. I kind of find myself developing techniques like looking at my hand and comparing it to my eye, mind's eye to the patient's eye uh, in front of me. And again, there's a whole array of techniques that individuals use. Often it can be artifacts, it can be body uh, mannerisms, strumming a guitar, I write with my right, uh, a various host uh, of, of techniques. What you can't tell right from left, an undesirable skill uh, deficit. So those individuals who had difficulty telling right from left felt different. I felt that this just wasn't the norm, society's norm, uh, and not keeping an expectation, certainly of being a doctor of the future. Um, their friends often teased them, and it was fine, but actually, in front of patients, in front of faculty, this is something they tried to hide. This was not a good uh, trait to show that they had difficulty in telling right from left. Uh, some quotes, just to give you an essence of that, how on earth does someone uh, get their left and right confused? Um, my friends have teased me, well, it's kind of just been gentle teasing, nothing very serious. Concealment, and I think this was a really interesting uh, theme, uh, is that those individuals who had difficulty in telling right from left tried to mask it. They didn't want to show others that they had this difficulty um, and they had a difference between others uh, where they felt that maybe they weren't best. And all these adaptive strategies, you know, my left, can you imagine these students in front of a patient? I'm going to operate in this leg, now hold on, this is my left hand. Uh, so they often concealed it. Uh, one of the quotes was that they put their hand in their pocket and they always tap their phone because they always put their phone in the left hand. So these are some of the strategies uh, that our students um, uh, uh, convey to us. I do try and mask it because it's something that's not spoken about. Uh, you, won't, don't want, you don't want to be seen weak, definitely uh, not, not amongst medical students. And then finally, um, how did this skill, this skill potential deficit have an impact on their professional identity, their, prof you know, their, their, their future of being uh, a, a doctor? Um, and it certainly didn't fit in with the, the norm that you know, it's assumed that all uh, healthcare professional students, including medical students, should be able to tell right from left. Um, so they often experienced negative emotions when they had to make this decision, particularly in front of others, and felt different, and actually felt more prone uh, to make errors. Because can you think about that? If it's a knit skill, I can tell right from left, would you have to build up your working memory? Which side's this? And also the emotions start to come and play, uh, and they give them a sense that they have difficulty in making, and maybe potentially more prone in making errors. And the quote there is that, I work in a shop and all the staff know that I'm training to be a doctor, so anytime I make a mistake, a laterality error, uh, they get, oh, but, but you're going to be a doctor, you can't, you can't be doing that. Uh, so really you can question their ability to be a professional, uh, healthcare professional of the future. So I'm just going to distill this all down into some sort of sense making and take home uh, messages. Uh, so our research for the first time in the literature challenges the notion that actually telling right from left is an innate task. When we all go back to our uh, undergraduate courses, we talk about proximal and distal and lateral. Do we ever really discriminate between right and left and that some individuals have difficulty in that? So we're challenging that. Um, the fact that these individuals are in a profession and a healthcare profession, this puts extra demand on their, uh, and their skills at having to differentiate between right from left. Uh, these individuals have a sense of in increased um, uh, chance of making an error. We can't say that for sure, but certainly that's their, their stance. Um, and so I think it's important that we do raise this profile uh, that some individuals have difficulty in telling, uh, discriminating right from left. Uh, and what we should do by that is a number of things. I think key is to try and reduce the, the stigma uh, that we should uh, you know, give respect and, and get respect and hold each other in positive regard. Oh, you have difficulty in telling right from left. That's okay, I'll work with you on this. Uh, rather than trying to hide it uh, and be stigmatized around that. And actually, I, I think this should be introduced more into our healthcare curricula when we talk about anatomical orientation, actually laterality and laterality error should also be emphasised uh, as well. So uh, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Carl uh, uh, and Martin uh, Dempster, my funders, uh, and uh, delighted this paper was published earlier this year uh, in medical education. And I was able to write back to the patient to say that his uh, trigger was able to uh, 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 for, for my piece of research. So thank you very much indeed.